guys what's up welcome back to another video today I am gonna be as you can see from the title talking about the things that I didn't know when I was in postpartum after I had my baby in la cuarentena whatever you want to call it and these are some things that I didn't know and I had to live through and I wish somebody would have told me this because it would have helped a lot everything was like a shock to me I couldn't believe what was going on with me everything like that so before we get into this video I do want to ask you guys to please subscribe to my channel turn on your post notifications and and leave me a comment down below if you guys like these type of videos and yeah um, let's get started with this video okay guys so like I said these are things that I had to go through me by myself like I had to learn from my experience and I didn't even know like half of these things were gonna happen and it was a very scary experience because you know I was living so I'm gonna tell you guys the background of my first pregnancy so I I do have one baby boy he's still my baby he's five years old and at that time I was living at Sergio's house Sergio's mom's house and which is his dad um, my fiance and we were living at his house but um, we, I had moved in like a month prior to me giving birth. So, you know, everything was still very new to me. I was comfortable with the family, but it wasn't like something that obviously like I had lived there for years and it was like, oh, you know, it was, I was cool with them, but it was still something that I had to get used to. So, you know, I had just been, been living there for a month. So... I didn't really have like my mom to tell me like okay this is what's gonna happen I never really asked I just thought like oh well I'm gonna have the baby and then I'm gonna be able to go to the mom I'm gonna go be able to go everywhere right after I have the baby and I don't know I just always thought it was so easy like that I never imagined you know that you still had to um como recuperarte you still had to you know your body still had to be resting and you couldn't do much and I was already tired of like not being able to do a lot of things because obviously you know you're very tired when you're like in your last days of pregnancy your last weeks and so I thought that I was gonna be feeling so great right after birth um, and I was so wrong so I'm gonna be starting off with the list I made a small list right here about the things that I experienced so Right after giving birth, um, you know, I felt fine. I didn't have a belly anymore. A lot of people do stay with the belly. I'm not sure why. But I didn't have a belly anymore. So my stomach was pretty flat right after I gave birth. It just kind of, I guess I was all baby. And it just kind of went with it. Um, so I, you know, felt fine when it came to that. Didn't I felt bloated, obviously, because, you know, you feel weird. You're like, you don't have your belly anymore. But it was nothing like, oh my god, shocking. So, one thing that I did notice was the ripping. So, nobody told me that there was a chance that my baby could rip me or tear me, whatever you want to call it, or the doctor can cut me. I never knew. I just thought that babies came out and then they didn't do anything to you and I just thought it was fine. Like, I just thought it was perfect. And it was not like that. Uh, if you guys don't know my birth story, so Nathan did... Um, ripped me he he tore me down there and it was the most painful thing I had to go through like I was in pain for a month so at the hospital when you tear I'm not sure what happens if you don't tear I only had one kid um, I'm pregnant right now I really hope that this one doesn't tear me but um, so I heard that whenever the doctor cuts you that it's actually better because it's calculated like he can actually it's better if they cut you that way it won't be like everywhere you know so when the baby actually tears you it kind of goes like it just rips you you know so it hurts more um, and so they gave me um, like this water bottle thing and they told me to when I pee to spray on my right there that way you know it could relieve the pain and basically I you know I had to take it with me whenever I had to pee the first time I peed it was the most painful thing in the world and because the wound was so fresh I remember I went to in the restroom and the nurse was like outside with me and she was telling me you know what to do and it was just so painful um I feel like I was more traumada with that part of 
birth, giving birth uh, because of how painful it was. I couldn't even sit down. I was very uncomfortable. Um, it just hurt really bad. And so another thing that nobody told me. Oh, okay. So, um, so that lasted about a month. I actually, I know this is like TMI, you guys, but... I actually had to, I got to the point where I got so tired of like, it wouldn't heal because, you know, I, I would, it, it just hurt so bad. So what I did was I, um, you know, because it's still very moist down there. I know this is nasty, but we all go through it. Well, a lot of people go through it and it's still very moist. And, you know, for, for enable, for your, for a cut to heal, you have to let it air out. You know, you have to let it turn into a scab and then like, you know. And because it was so moist down there, um, it just wouldn't heal. It had already been like a month and a half and I was still in so much pain. And, you know, I told Sergio, I'm like, I don't know what to do anymore. Like, it just hurts so bad. So he's like, why don't you just air out? Like, whenever I'm not home, or, like, just lock the door and just lay there. Like, just put something on the bottom because obviously, you know, you are bleeding. So he's like, just open your legs and just let it and honestly you guys it healed so much so fast like after that it took me about a week a week and a half and it was it the pain just went away drastically like it was just nothing compared so the airing the airing out part i'm not sure if people recommend it or if people knew this but it helped me a lot another thing i didn't know was the blood that comes after birth i didn't know that I was gonna be wearing these diapers after birth. I had no clue whatsoever. When the nurse gave me that, I was like, why, you know? And that's what happens. And it's said something that I really didn't know and a lot of people do know this, but I guess, I don't know, I just never asked. And yeah, so you do bleed um, for 40 days. Well. That's a cuarentena, that's what kind of like it means. It could be a little bit longer, but I bled for about a month. It's like 40 days. Yeah, about a month. About the cuarentena, that's how much I bled. Um, it wasn't super heavy, you know, only like the first days was like the first week was super heavy. And then it just slowed down to like regular period, you know, and um, little by little it just went away. But I did not know that was going to happen. One and one thing that was really like a shock to me that even I even took like breastfeeding not classes but you know right after I gave birth at Kaiser in Bowen Park, California, and right after I gave birth um, because I did want to breastfeed um, and I was a first time mother, they were like, okay, well you know if you would like to go, you're able to go, and I was like, okay, yeah, like I, why not? It's extra help, and I did want to breastfeed my baby, so. Um, even though he was latching on fine, I was like, I still want to go to see. And they did, you know, teach me what to do if he didn't want to or to just offer it more if he fell asleep, to wake him up, things like that. So, one thing they didn't tell me was that it was going to hurt. So, later on, like, I remember the first days, it was fine. But after, like, maybe a week after I gave birth, the pain started, you guys. So, my... I, any time that I would either pump or my baby would be on my breast, um, I would get contractions. So, and a lot of people don't believe it. Like, why? What do you mean contractions? Yes, it was exactly like contractions. And it is because your uterus, is, is it the uterus? I hope I'm not saying it wrong, but I think it's the uterus is going back to its normal size. So it's like shrinking. So it makes like, makes you get cramping. And the cramping is exactly, exactly how contractions feel. It's exactly the same pain. And I remember I would have my baby sometimes breastfeeding him because I would pump, but I would try to pump, um, have him on my breast more because when I would pump, I would keep it in the fridge for, I don't know, for any emergency, like if we went out somewhere or anything like that I would just want to have that extra milk in the fridge and in the freezer you know when I would be home I would always try to breastfeed him and it got to the point where I, any anytime that I would get those pains I would have to ask Sergio to grab the baby for me because I would have to like just go like 
is like oh my god and i would like i remember holding on to the bed just like how contractions how you are with contractions how you're like you don't even know what to get that's how i would feel and it was just horrible pain and it just sucked i really hope that this time around i don't get those pains because i am planning on breastfeeding my baby and oh my god that was so painful another thing is the bloating the bloated feeling that you have right after birth so like i said i didn't have a belly but i did feel bloated obviously you know you just were pregnant for nine months you're not gonna go to your regular body right away so obviously you're gonna feel a little bit heavier a little bit different and i did feel that um right after i i gave birth i they let you shower in the hospital and this is one thing that I did know and maybe you didn't know but maybe it will help you is wearing a faja right after. So a lot of hospitals don't let you do this. A lot of hospitals do. They don't really care. Um, my hospital didn't really say anything about it. I mean they didn't know. I didn't tell them. But um, I put on my faja right after I had my son. Um, I didn't stop wearing it for like two months after. I wore it for a very long time and I I think that that had to do with me wearing my faja a lot. Um, I, my stomach was exactly how my stomach was before I gave birth. Um, I didn't get any, like you know that sagginess that some people get. I didn't get any of that. My stomach was like intact. So that's something that I did know and, and that's also something that I do plan on doing this time around because it did help me a lot the first time so why not just do it this is something that I also didn't know and I didn't realize it until I was actually there so like I said I did live with Sergio's mom and I didn't know that all we had to eat was like um, oatmeal and you know calditos I don't know if this is just like a Hispanic thing but you're not supposed to eat very heavy foods and thankfully you know she did make me those things because I couldn't be in the kitchen things like that and I think it was more for like the milk supply um, I'm not really sure but I know a lot of Hispanics you know I know my mom would have done the same thing and it's just something that we do um, but that's something that I didn't know I thought I was gonna be able to eat anything and I guess not I guess you have to take care of yourself after birth and then with that came no cleaning around the house um, yeah obviously you know like I said I was in a lot of pain down there and I didn't know that was gonna happen so we couldn't really I couldn't really clean I needed a lot of help I could clean like you know the surface of things and things like that but i couldn't really bend down or do you know do anything heavy move things you know things like that one thing that i did know is when well when you're hispanic at least like my mom and a lot of people would tell me like my family to cover myself a lot especially because i had them in october october 31st and it was like around the winter not, not the winter but the fall time so it was already getting really cold and so they would tell me, you know, just make sure you cover yourself, um, wear everything, like wear a bufanda, a scarf, wear like a, a gorro because that your mouth can get chueca. I don't know if this is true or not, but my mom did tell me like, if you don't cover yourself, my friend, you know, she, she thought she was cool and she didn't listen and because she went out, she got like a golpe de aire or something. And her like her whole face was like chueca and yeah so I was very traumada when it came to that I was like oh no so I made sure to listen I made sure to cover up anytime we did live in the garage so anytime I went out to the restroom I would cover myself really well and the last thing that nobody told me about is postpartum depression um, I don't think that I actually got postpartum because you know, a lot of people say that you feel like you don't, como que detestas a tu hijo. I never felt that way. I felt happy with my baby. So I, I don't think I experienced it. You don't know. I feel like you don't know that you're going through it. You know, until after you come out of it, you're like, oh shit. But I feel like, I mean, obviously nobody really is like, oh my God, I'm going through postpartum. Let me snap out of it. You know, it's something that you can't control and it's something that you just kind of don't realize. And you just feel very sad. So, um... I don't think that I was uh, going through postpartum, but I feel like that's something very important that a lot of people don't talk about. And 
if you are going through it you should really seek help i do know some people that you know even got to killing themselves and it was it's very sad you know because you're supposed to be it's supposed to be the happiest time of your life you know you just had a baby you know maybe you're not feeling so well but you know you just had a baby he the bond with your baby but some people you know it's uncontrollable it's not your fault that you're feeling like that but if you can get the help you know try to talk to someone be around friends family and try not to be alone because yes i have heard um unfortunately a lot of stories that you know it can get really bad and that's so sad you know that makes me so sad and i really hope that i don't get it this time and like i said i don't know if i would be able to control my emotions but all i know is you know i do tell sergio and i tell him that you know this happens and just make sure that you're checking up on me like not trying to be like check up on me you know but i always tell him like you know this is real and this can happen oh, i don't want to cry but um you know anyone anyone that has just given birth can happen to anyone so it actually happened to one of my family members um where she just didn't want to be around her baby so you know we knew like so we gave her her space and eventually she came around um it was just a lot of things that the baby was going through you know he was he had he had he just went through a lot the baby was going through a lot himself and it was just too much for her and being a single parent especially you know so we gave her her space and um eventually she came around but what i'm trying to say is you know like it's always important because it's always important for us to check up on other people because they may not know or they could be in denial that it's happening to them but it's always just important to be you know just remind ourselves that it can happen to anyone um but i mean i don't want to end this so sad but it's just some things that do happen and yes you guys so if you guys have any other um things that maybe we don't know before we get go into you know postpartum or la cuarentena please let me know down below i mean these are things that i didn't know me personally but if you guys have things that maybe I don't even know because like I said I've only experienced it one time it could be a, a totally different experience this time around you know maybe I can feel better or maybe I could feel worse or you know everyone has a different experience um, and let me know what should I expect because I want to know now I don't want to be like the first time where I was like what is this why is this happening you know and let me know down below in the comments and thank you all so much for watching i'll talk to you guys next time please don't forget to give me a like and subscribe to my channel bye